Now, once we have talked about do while loop and while loop, let's talk about the next type of loop, which is a for loop. Now, if you go back to while loop, so let me just remove do here and let me put this back here. And okay, let me remove the semicolon as well. Now, there's one more thing. If you talk about this while loop, if you can see, we have three things here. The first one is we have initialization, we have a condition, and then we have an increment. So basically, we are doing three things on three different lines. And if we talk about any finite loop, so when I say finite loop, it means it is starting somewhere, it is ending somewhere. And we know when, when it is going to end. There are some loops where you're not sure when it will going, going to end. Example, when the user says enter, it will end. Maybe the network goes off, it will end. So based on some condition, it will end. Maybe you are trying to read a file. So in a file, let's say you have a thousand characters. And we don't know how many characters we have. So when you open the file and when you try to read each character, so the, the loop will end when the characters end in the, in the file. So we are not sure. That's why I'm saying it can be a, not an infinite loop, but somewhere we cannot determine when the loop will end. So at this point, we can determine, right? But anyway, so we have three things here. We have a counter. We are initializing it. We are checking for the condition. And then we are incrementing it. So what if we can just write all these things in one line. What I'm saying is, can we just pick up this thing from here, cut and paste it here itself. So on the same line, we are initializing the variable. And on the same line, I'm give, I can give a semicolon. I can say I++. And of course, we don't have to do that here now. The only thing is, while loop does not support this syntax. While says, I will only for check for the condition. But then if you want to use this type of syntax, you have to use another type of loop, which is called a for loop. So in a for loop, you can mention three different statements in one line. Mind you, these are three different statements. Why is because we are using semicolons in between. So this is one statement here. This is another statement. And this is another statement. And you can see I'm just printing hi here, the same, the same code. I just want to check if this works. Compile run. Oh, we have not got any output. Oh, it's because the value of i is still 5. Let's make it 1. And by doing that, I can just compile this code and run. You can see we got all the values. Makes sense, right? So how a for loop works? So we have to set the initial value, which we, have, which we have done here. And then we have to check for the condition. And then we have to increment or decrement. So let's say I want to print that in a decrement order. I mean, I want to print 4, 3, 2, 1. In that case, I will start from 4 and then I have to end the i should be greater than and equal to 1 and i plus plus. Sorry, i minus minus because we are decrementing it. Compiled run, you can see we got high 4, high 3, high 2 and high 1. So this works. Okay, can we do something more here? Actually, we can. Uh, what if you want to start Let's, let's again go for the increment part. So let's say I'm going for 1 and it should be less than or equal to 4 and then I'm saying I++. See, most of the time we'll start with 1 itself, right? So that's how your uh, normal number system works. As a human, we do that, right? But computer normally start their counting from 0. It's because of the binary format, uh, because in binary we have 0 to 1. In fact, in the number system also, we start with 0, we say 0 to 9, right? Uh, in fact, once we start with the array concept, there as well, the number starts with zero. So in general, in computers, the number system starts with zero. So we can also say, let's start with zero. But the question is, if I start with zero, where I have to end it? Is it four or five or three? Because we want to print only four times, right? So let's keep it four, which is equal to four. And then we also have zero here. So let's try to compile and run, you can see we got uh, five values. It starts from zero and it is ending at four. Okay, that is an issue. How do I stop it at three? I want to print zero, one, two, three, that's it, four, four iterations. So in that case, what you can do is you can stop it at three. Now this is something which will take time for you if you're doing this for the first time. When you're starting with zero, you have to end before that. You have to end before the count. So if you want to do it four times, you have to end it at three. Okay, now let's try this. I will say compile and run. You can see we got four times. Now, one of the common syntax you might be seeing in most of the examples or if you're, if you're referring a book or online content, you can also stop this as four, 
but you have to say less than 4 because you're not including 4 here. You're saying less than 4, not equal to 4. So this is one of the common syntax. You can see it starts with 0 and it ends less than 4. And now if you try this, you can see we got 4 values. Make sense? Okay. Uh, now let's try something else. So loops normally work well when you try to print some pattern or when you try to do something repeatedly. So what I will do is, let's try something. So what I will try is, I want to try this one. I want to try this one. I want to try to print the number of days. I will say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 because we have 7 days. And also every day I want to print uh, 24 hours. That looks good, right? Uh, we have talked about this example, right? So what I will do is, first of all, I want to print all the days. So I will say 1, 2, 7, including 7. So I have to say equal to. And then it, here I will just print the number. I will say, okay, I will say day 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, imagine day 1 means Monday, day 2 means Tuesday and, and so on. So if I try to do that, I will say compile and do run. You can see we got all the days. Now with days, I want to print the number of hours. Okay. I know that will be tricky. Or maybe we can we can actually print from uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Because that's that's most of the work hours, right? So let's say if I want to build a calendar. In fact, I don't want to print till 7. 5 makes sense because uh, we have 6th and 7th day as holiday. So let's try this. I will compile. And then we got 5 days. In these 5 days, I want to print from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. How do I do that? So I can simply print with the help of statements. I can say uh, this is uh, 1 or 9 a.m. Right? Or I will simply say 9 and then I can say 10. I can just print this once again. So this is 10 and so on. Right? I can print it till 18 because 6 p.m. is 18. If you go for 24 hours of clock. Uh, but then don't you think we are doing this thing repeatedly? I have to basically type so many lines. So, of course, we can use a loop here, right? So, what if we can use a inner loop? We have talked about nested loops. Here, we are doing it with for. So, I can say for, and I have to give a count, right? So, I can say j will start from where? Now, this is tricky. Should we start j from 1? We can. So, I can say 1 and j less than. So, how many hours we are doing here? We are doing 9 hours, right? So, I can say 9 and j plus plus, right? And then, I can just give a loop open and loop close and then we can print the hours here. Now what hours I want to print? I cannot print 9 because 9 is not, nine. it will print 9 every time. For example, if I show you this, I'll say clear. In fact, what I will do, do, you know, before printing 9, I will give a tab so that it will give some indentation before it prints. This is what I was saying. You can see we got day 1 and we got 9 hours here, but then it is printing 999. I don't want to print 999. Maybe I want to put an attendance here or maybe a calendar where we can mark what, what we are doing going to do. So what we can do here is I want to uh, say, okay, I, I should not be printing 9. After this space, I can say I want to print, let's say, value of j. But there j will print from 1 to 9. Let me show you what I'm saying. Clear, compile, run. So you can see it is printing 1 to 9. I don't want to print 1 to 9. I want to print from 9 to 18. In that case, can I simply add this with 8? Uh, because it will start with 1. So 1 plus 8 is 9, right? It will, it will start from 9. And every time it will increment the value of j. So you will get some other values. I will just compile this and run. Oh, something went wrong. Okay. Now what is happening here is we should have talked about this before, but it's if we are never late, right? So what, what is happening here is we were expecting it will print 9. But what is happening is when we are saying that we are adding a string with a number, it will concatenate, right? So here we were expecting that j and 8, which is 1 and 8, will get added to get 9. But actually what is happening is it is getting concatenated. So we have to mention, hey, you know, uh, instead of adding a string to a number than number, what you can do is you can put a bracket here. So I want this to resolve by itself. I mean, this should be resolved in a separate way. So whatever number you're adding here, 1 plus 8 will be a separate thing. And then you are concatenating that with a string. Let's try that. Compile and run. Oh, it is working, I guess. No, it is not working, actually. Oh, okay. We, we cannot add 6, right? Because 
it's the 17th hour which gets over okay so let's say we are printing for 9 hours which is from 9 to 5 okay which also includes the uh, the fifth hour the fifth, 17th hour okay uh, that's tricky <laughs> okay in fact you know what should i do i should actually print a uh, colon here or maybe a dash hyphen from this r to this r this is what happens when you take the example randomly so i will say j plus 9 so what I was saying is this, you know, uh, from nine to yeah, this makes sense now. So you can see we can, we can we have actually built a calendar for this week. So day one from nine to ten we can do something here. From ten to eleven we can do something here. We can set a meet, we can set a meeting calendar something like that. Uh, so what I'm doing is we are printing J plus eight which is nine, and then J plus nine which is ten for the first iteration. As the value of J increases, it will have different values here. Okay, makes sense, right? So this is what uh, we have achieved in this example. So that's how basically your for loop works. Okay, this is nested for loop, we have seen that as well. Okay, now once you understood this, let me just comment this part, I don't want to do that. I have a question for you now. Think about this and let me know what could be the sequence here. See, when we write this in three, uh, in the same line, th these three things, how do you think they're executing? Is it something like this is getting executed first and then this one and then this one? And later on, after executing all these three statements, it is executing this statement. What do you think? Okay, let me give you the answer. So the moment you execute the for loop, or let me just, you know, this is the best time to run a debug mode. So I will say run, start debugging, taking some time to start the debug. Okay, so I will say step over. So you can see it is executing the uh, for loop, but we have not started that yet. So let me start the for loop. The moment you start a for loop, you can see the value of i is one. It has checked for the condition as well but it is not it has not incremented yet because the value of i is still one so that means these two things will be executed first and then it will execute the block and then if i say step over it will execute the next iteration in fact you know what i will do for the next iteration i will say step into the value of i is three okay it is not doing that but anyway so it is executing the body and then it is incrementing okay so that's what I wanted to show you. Cool. Uh, so point to remember, it will execute the this statement first. It will not, it will be done only once, and then it will check for the condition. Then we execute the block, and then it will increment it. I mean, whatever you want to do in that uh, situation, in that portion. In fact, if you want to uh, skip any of this step, you can actually. So that what if you want to skip this from here? It's your choice. You can just keep it empty. The only thing is, since you are skipping that, if you want to make it work, you have to say I++. Of course, you have to increment somewhere, otherwise it will be an infinite loop. You can actually skip the initialization part from here, and you can write it outside. As I mentioned, your choice. It's just that you have to put the semicolon. That's compulsory. You have to have two semicolons there. And now let's compile, run. You can see it, it works. So that's how you can work with for. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, in the next video, let's try to build some patterns using for loop.